The sky is blue with fluffy white clouds. The air is clean. It's a fantastic day in the Wasatch, at least at the top of Little Cottonwood Canyon. It's a far cry from what you can find right now in the Salt Lake Valley. Fine particulates fill the air. The level of pollutants is logged in real time at the Department of Air Quality's weather station at Hawthorne Elementary School. It's a better picture of, of what is the air that we breathe. The peaks in pollutants generally spike twice a day, morning and evening rush hour. Each of us who drives a car contributes to the problem. Sure, older cars are retired and newer cars are more efficient, but as our population grows, there are more cars on the road. Experts estimate that about half of the dangerous pollutants in our air come from mobile emissions. The other half, what they call point source emissions, comes from our homes or businesses and big industry, like the refineries in the North Salt Lake Valley. You can see the smoke as it's pumped into the air, but you may not know what's in it. This is the peak right here for benzene. Well, we know that benzene comes from petroleum products. Every time you put gas in your car, um, you know, you could be exposed to benzene, I mean, it comes from fuel. Many industries leave a fingerprint of some kind on our environment, whether it's an auto body shop, a bakery, or a fast food restaurant. Experts can follow the compounds in the air and the direction they are moving in the wind. This one is uh, detecting for carbon. Of course, industry like this is often the target of the accusatory finger pointing blame for the smog problem. But the air we see and breathe today is nothing like it was in the mid-1980s when at the north end of Utah Lake, Geneva Steel was fully operational. Experts estimate that on a bad day, Geneva was responsible for 50 to 60 percent of the pollutants in the air. The steel mill opened in 1944 to enhance the national steel output during World War II. The process of refining steel involved coal-fired furnaces sending a seemingly constant plume of smoke into the air. An environmental economist at BYU was quite curious about the effects those emissions were having on public health. Then, coincidentally, a work stoppage hit Geneva. Arden Pope found it a perfect time to do some research. Pope gathered data from hospital admissions throughout northern Utah from the time before Geneva closed during the closure and after it reopened. He was specifically interested in the records of children suffering poor respiratory health. So it, it turned out the results were quite dramatic and quite, quite obvious that Geneva Steel had a substantial uh, impact on the air quality in the valley and that that air quality was impacting the health of our, of our children. In the initial studies, what we saw is that Pediatric respiratory hospital admissions, mostly bronchitis and bronchiolitis and re related respiratory disease, was strongly associated with the operation of the steel mill as well as the air pollution associated with that steel mill. And the results were even more telling. We were fairly naive. We thought, ah, oh, it's just going to be respiratory disease. But as we, as we followed up these studies and did more and more research, not just in Utah but elsewhere, it became apparent that exposure to this air pollution not only contributes to respiratory disease, but it contributes to cardiovascular disease and, in fact, cardiopulmonary disease more generally. Rates of asthma and respiratory problems were twice as high when Geneva was in operation. And those were groundbreaking studies for the entire nation, if not the world, because they showed a dramatic difference in hospitalizations for things like heart and lung disease just corresponding exactly with the opening and closing of its new plant. The scientific and medical world took note of Pope's findings. And even today, watchdog groups use his data as ammunition to take industry to task for causing disproportionate levels of damage to an environment that affects us all. They will just continue to do them as long as they can until there's enough public outcry to say you can't do that anymore. I mean, Moms for Clean Air is one group in the process of suing Kennecott, which admittedly is responsible for nearly 6% of the toxins in our air. 
most of our refineries um, and whatnot are in compliance with federal laws, they're still externalizing a lot of their costs of their air pollution onto the community. Yet experts at the mining operation contend they're cleaning it up. In order to continue to be able to operate here, we've had to make major investments and take a lot of steps to actually create, uh, uh, mitigate our impacts. For example, we've invested a billion dollars in our smelter. It's one of the cleanest and the most modern in the world. Primarily what you see is steam coming out of there. Yet critics refute that, including another party to the lawsuit, Utah Physicians for a Healthy Environment. We know that in fact, the particle pollution that comes over from Kennecott and then kind of lands on the Wasatch Range carries with it a lot of heavy metals. That's no surprise. That's what's going on out there. They're mining metals. But in fact, we can prove it. We, we can take that particle pollution, analyze it, and know where it came from. Kennecott claims to have gone great lengths to be a good neighbor and a positive contributor to this community. Just look around, they say, and you could see its impact. In our next report, we'll take a closer look at what Kennecott and other businesses and communities are doing to help improve our environment. For the Utah League of Cities and Towns, I'm Susan Wood.